845 Sway in the Morning. It's with honor, Tracy G, mm-hmm. that we have this man here. I've watched him for so many years. Um, uh, absolutely. Obviously, a lot of folks know him because of the, um, his life partner being such a beacon of light, a magnificent human being, Oprah Winfrey. Yes. Um, it truly, and I know you got to say that no matter what. I don't have to say it, but you, I say it. You say it anyway, huh? Right. All right. Uh, he's a founder of Chicago, Illinois. It's AAD, Athletes Against Drugs, uh, which is a nonprofit organization. Um, he's arranged for sports figures to educate children about substance abuse. He also created S. Graham and Associates, which is a Chicago-based corporate and educational marketing and consulting firm. He's worked with uh, some of the most powerful people in our generation, Maya Angelou, uh, as well as South African activist Winnie Mandela. Um, he's written a slew of New York Times best-selling books right here to help people improve their lives and catapult their existence to a higher level, which he is doing today with his new book, Identity Leadership, to lead others. You must first lead yourself. The one and only Stedman Graham is here, ladies oh, and wow. gentlemen. Thank you for that introduction. Man. Absolutely, well man. Oh, man. No, I got to do that, Thank man. Thank you so much. I've always um, been fascinated by, uh, by you um, and, uh, and others like you who have uh, really dedicated themselves to uh, fighting for uh, causes to help improve our community, especially in, spe- in particular black causes, uh, when you don't have to do that, you know. And I'm just curious to where did that come from, you know, um, and where, where did you come from? Well, I grew, up, <laughs> I grew up in a place called Whitesboro, New Jersey, all black town surrounded by White County, where my uh, uh, relative or family member of ours, George H. White, was a former Congress uh congressman during reconstruction Uh and uh created this town where he wanted to bring african americans together uh so that they wouldn't have to deal with the uh discrimination and Uh the system of oppression Uh so they can create their own businesses and all that so i'm rooted in uh you know the african-american culture Uh and uh and have a history of that and have a family history of that so um, that's a foundational piece of mine that yeah. will, I will carry for the rest of my life. Uh huh. And that and that's okay. So that that explains uh, what makes up Stepman mm-hmm. Graham. You're also a grandfather, right? Grandfather, yes. yes. I have uh, a beautiful uh, granddaughter and a wonderful daughter and and and, uh, and stepson and all of that. Was so was it important to instill those those same values in them? It's important to have tradition in our family, okay, so that we organize the culture and the tribe of our family, so that we can create pride in our family and to be able to understand the educa- education, the value of education and also business uh-huh. and so that we could control our own social economic development by changing the way we think and feel about ourselves and to permeate that energy throughout our family and to make us feel good about ourselves. I grew up in Oakland, Stebb, and, and you know, um, it, it took me a long time to kind of like uh, change my worldly view, which is something you write about in this book. You know, um, and I, I grew up thinking that um, I'm existing in a system that is diabi- diabolically created to work against people like me who come from where I come from, especially with our educational programs um, in public schools that don't teach you this kind of um, tutelage that you have taught throughout the decades. Uh, what is your thoughts and belief in that? Well, uh, you know, you, you're, you're, you're being programmed. All of us are, were programmed. Yeah, okay. And we bought into the program, and the program is, you know, based on um, energy, and the energy becomes negative. So uh-huh. it's negative energy that you're dealing with, uh-huh. and you're looking at everything from the negative viewpoint, uh-huh. and eventually you look at yourself as negative, uh-huh. and then you end up trying to destroy yourself and do everything that's negative, and then you be comfortable. You're comfortable with negativity, and then that becomes your if you're not if you're not doing something negative if it's not if you don't feel negative if you're not cursing somebody out if you're not jumping on somebody whatever you don't feel like you're 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 you know that you're that you're real uh huh and then you try to make that right and then you're struggling with that because the process of success is not negativity uh huh I worked in the prison system five years yeah. Mm. So the reason folks are in prison is because they're so negative they can't deal with you know society. Uh-huh. So they have to lock folks. They have to lock them up. And should they be there? No, man. These guys are smart. Yeah. These guys are strong. They have all the ingredients. They're resilient. They don't have the process for success. Uh-huh. 
and they've had the trauma they had to deal with and they had the background and environmentally they've been put into a community structurally and politically designed to fail. Uh So if you don't have any consciousness above that, above that system of oppression, then you end up being who other people want you to be. Yeah. And eventually what happens is you end up destroying yourself, which is how it's designed. Uh Uh-huh. And we're going to put all of y'all into a community that, you know, is self-destructive based on negative thinking. Uh-huh. And if you happen to have a parent that says, wait, son, wait a minute. Or a father that says, son, wait a minute, I'm going to disrupt the pattern that's put in place. Uh-huh. The system that's put in place, designed to take you out, right? I'm going to disrupt that. I'm going to give you some information. I'm going to try to lead you the right way. I'm going to try to... Let you read the Bible. I'm going, to try, I'm going to try to make sure that you understand the goodness of who you are. I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure you understand the core of who you are so that you don't let anybody else define you. Then you have the tools to define yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you can utilize the American Free Enterprise System as a way to organize information, education, make it relevant to your purpose in life, transfer it to your mind so you become a thinking human being, mm-hmm. right? Which mm-hmm. is what you have to do on this show. Yes. And then transfer that to the American Free Enterprise System, create social economic development. So you have a home in Oakland or L.A. and New York. Uh-huh. You can live around the world, right? Uh-huh. And you can control your own social economic development, and then you can raise your family. Stedman Graham, ladies and wow. gentlemen. I, 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 and I'm glad you uh, put that to words because, but first you got to do the, you still got to do the work. You know, you got to go to the pit. You got to go to the to the bottom of the pit. The bottom of, of the, the pit. pit. And uh, when you talk about identity leadership, to lead others, uh, once you take that trip um, to the bottom of the pit, you must first lead yourself. And what this book does, right, is gives you kind of anecdotes on how you can do that. Self-actualization. Self-actualization. To teach you how to organize yourself. So it's uh-huh. an organizing of yourself around your skills, uh-huh. talents, and abilities. You are here, my brother, because of your talents, your skills, and your ability, Uh and your drive, and your passion, and that makes you happy every single day. That's the core of who you are. As Uh long as you work on that, then you can figure the rest out later. Okay. Because you'll have the money to, you know, take yeah. some trips. I got some money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you'll I'm not talking, to, you know. No, you, but, you, no, you, no, you, but I'm talking, you know, yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. You'll be able to travel around, learn mm-hmm. some things, meet some people, get some new self-awareness about <clears> some other things, read some books, get, organize your own information, you know, have the experiences, talk to experts to get it right. Yeah. Most people don't have that opportunity. Yeah. Because most people, a lot of folks can't read. Mm. So if I can make sure that you are you can't read and your schools are bad and you have no process for for organizing content, uh-huh. then you don't even have a chance because now you're primal. Uh-huh. Hmm. You're just going to respond. I'm going to give you a gun Impulsive. at 13 years yeah. of age and you're going to shoot your own people because you hate yourself. Uh-huh. So, you know, so all that's learned behavior. So it's a learning process. The way the system is set up now, it's hard to really learn. It's, it's difficult to learn because the system teaches you how to memorize, take tests, repeat the information back, get labeled with a grade two weeks later, you forget the information. Yeah. So, and then most people are stuck in the box doing the same thing over and over every single day. They wake up in the morning, they wash their face, they brush their teeth, they get something to eat, they get the kids off to school, work all day, come home in the afternoon, spend time with the family, they watch TV, they go to bed, maybe they dream. So you got mm-hmm. 6.9 billion people who are not conscious of their uh, potential as a human being. Uh-huh. And then everything you learn, you forget. So if you're doing the same thing over and over every single day, which is nothing, everything you learn, you forget, and it's nothing. Nothing from nothing is nothing. Yeah. So if you don't have a process for getting out of that system to create your own customized system, which you have done, you've created, you're working on your own customized system to co-create with the world that you live in every single day. Uh-huh. That's the financial system, that's the educational system, that's the you know, uh, community systems, that's all those systems are in place, the social economic systems that are designed just to survive. Call work. Call work. So you gotta pull yourself out of that, right? Uh-huh. And then focus on, because it used to be 20 years ago, we could, you know, social security, pension, all that, the institution would take care of you, we all knew each other, no problem. Now, technology is saying, you got to be smart. 
Technology is saying, you got to be able to use this equipment. Yeah. Technology is saying, you got to be skilled. Technology is saying, you got to be able to use the internet. Technology is saying, maybe cable's going out of business. You know, it's not relevant anymore. So we're changing the game. Amazon's changing the game. You, you talked about in this Blockbuster, you made a comparison to Blockbuster, and then what happened with Netflix. Sway in the morning. Um, identity leadership. To lead others, you must first lead yourself. Uh, a book by New York Times bestselling author Stedman Graham, who's here right now. Uh, Tracy G, you got a question? Yes, um, plural, if you could add a couple, an S to the end of that. But really quickly, you spoke about Stedman, um, the pit that a lot of us have, and it's murky for some, murkier for some other folks, deeper for some other folks. What was the pit that you had to climb out of? Wow, the pit I had to climb, I grew up with two dis, uh, uh, um, disabled brothers, special need brothers. Wow. And so um, I would never tell anybody that. Hmm. You know, later as I, as I got as I became older, I was in college. I'd never say anything like that because mm-hmm. I felt like it devalued me and my family, and I was ashamed of that. And so, um, you know, later in life, in order for me to be able to even talk about that, I had to go back to the pit, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and figure out, you know, who I was as a person. So I would have the emotional strength to be able to even have a conversation about it and realize that. My father and mother did the best they could based on what they knew. If they'd have known better, they'd have done better. You know, but it's not my, you know, I'm not responsible for that. Right. And so, you know, I used to get beat up every every day. I used to fight every day in school because folks would call my family name and, and names and, and me names and all of that. And so, you know, I was bullied a lot coming up and all of that. I had to go back to the pit to try to undo that and try to unpeel the onion. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh to figure out, you know, again, how do you get the emotional strength and how do you understand who you are and build from that, but that would give you the confidence. That's why purpose is so important to the core of who you are. Mm-hmm. If you don't have a purpose, it's hard to have any strength. And then you then you have to you have to act like you're doing something to the outside world. You know, you got to act the part. You got to you know, look, you got to have the attitude. You're just faking. Cuz you have no sense of self. Mm-hmm. And you have no control over again the American Free Enterprise System and how you apply that system to your development. You have no organizational skills; they're weak. You don't you don't know how to take information, education, make it relevant to who you are, transfer it to your mind, so you can actually think. Mm-hmm. I read one book in high school. I've written twelve. It's my twelfth book. What's the difference? I discovered the power of information. And the and the, and the and good book says, "Be transformed by the renewal of your mind." Amen. And, and without knowledge, the people, you know, the people suffer. So you are destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. So if I keep the content away from you and you're just ignorant all the time and you just don't know anything and you don't read anything, then you're going to operate at a lower level. Uh. So in order for you to ascend, you got to read some books. You got to you got to um, know some things. You got to be able to organize. And the way that I've really changed my life is that I understood, I was a pretty good reader, I understood how to read well, I didn't understand how to take information and apply it to my own skill sets, to my talents so, and my ability so I could grow beyond my poverty mindset, uh. my lack of you know knowing how to do it. So purpose, love, love is the key word, Passion, talents, skills are related. Do what you love. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about this because you touched on like negativity early in the conversation and just like the influence and how you kind of just dwell in it. What do you think about social media adding to the negativity? It's be careful what goes in your unconscious. So you become conscious and then it goes to the unconscious that becomes who you are. That becomes your anger, that becomes your rage, that becomes your mad, you wonder why you are upset, you wonder why you go off, you wonder why you're mentally ill. It's because all of that stuff is doing what? It's not going away. Every experience that happened to you is locked into your unconscious. So you have to be conscious of it to change the unconscious or to change the habit so you can manage it. It's not going away, it's gonna be there. So the foundation of my existence is negative. 
okay, because of my experiences. So it's not going away. I can pull it up any time. What I have to do in order to be able to ascend to a higher level is I have to be conscious of it uh-huh. and realize, man, I can get angry like anybody else. Uh-huh. And if you hit the wrong button, I may go back down there and you know show you another side of who I am. So that's in when you walk in the door. Don't mess with this guy, you know. Uh-huh. He, don't, you know the way you stand, the way you carry yourself comes from those experiences, right? But you got to be aware of it. You got to be aware of your weaknesses, your strengths. You got to be aware of what's what's possible for you. You got to be aware of your gifts. You got to be aware of all of that, so you can organize it around the greatest country in the world, America, where we have systems that actually work. School systems that you can go to school and learn. You know, colleges that you can do advanced studies with. Um, organizations that support your social economic development, okay? And you get a chance to use that and find that. And so, and now we have technology as a way to now organize all of the information around the world and apply that to your development so you can empower yourself. So we talk about identity leadership. Identity leadership is self-leadership based on philosophy that you cannot lead anybody else until you first lead yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you can't lead yourself first, you can't take care of your family. If you can't lead yourself first, you can't take care of your kids. Uh. If you can't lead yourself first, you're not going to be able to even stay on the job because you don't have the discipline to show up on time. Once you acquire um, the, the the needed information, um, the, the 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 needed processes, uh, a lot of times when you start to ascend, uh, folks are scared of change. You have a chapter in your book called "Pilot the Seasons of Change." What does that mean? That means uh, only the strong survive. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Don't yeah. care uh, care about your weakness. Yeah. Don't care about how weak you are. Mm-hmm. Only the strong survive, and all the changes that you go through from the time you wake up. Imagine all the changes just to get up in the morning, just to be able to brush your teeth, wash your face, just to be able to uh, do what you have to do before you even start work, just to, to go to work and be on that job all day long, and then to come home and have maybe. You know, I, I've been, be, I'm around people who have two, two or three jobs. Uh-huh. So pilot the seasons to change. Do you have the internal capacity to deal with the changing circumstances? Or do you break? It's like an athlete. If I want to break the athlete, the other, my opponent, well, well you know, in boxing, if you're yeah. boxing, right, first thing you do is you try to win the fight, it's, you know, as soon as you, both of you are staring at each other. Uh-huh. And see who can blink first. Okay, and then if you blink first, uh, and I see fear, yep. I got you. Uh-huh. So, pilot just ceases to change, excuse me, do you have the capacity to be able to sustain yourself over a long period of time despite the changes and obstacles you overcome? You will face lots of obstacles, and you have. Do you have the internal capacity to deal with change? Can you maneuver it? Can you Are you flexible? Uh-huh. So today, you got so many changes and so many things happening that you got to be able to maneuver like water. You got to be fluid. You know, somebody says something negative to you. Uh, hey, you're Oprah's man, or, you know, laugh at you or something like that. And I've been through all of that. Yeah. So what happens is they make try to make fun of that. Saturday Night Live does a lot of parodies of you. Well, it doesn't make any difference yeah. because it's not how the world defines me. It's how I define myself. Okay. That's the strength. Not what you think about me. Mm-hmm. It's how I think about myself. And that's the only thing that matters. And so the key is to be able to figure out how to maneuver through all of that, right? Because the world's going to try to do what? Marginalize your existence like they've been doing all of their life mm-hmm. to make you feel like, to make you feel like you're, you're, not, you're worth two cents. If you adopt that philosophy, I got you. Yeah. I won. Statman Graham is here, ladies and gentlemen, identity leadership. I'm going to let these citizens talk with you for a second. Ricky is on the line. What's up, Ricky? How you doing? Hey, Ricky, 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 Ricky. Ricky, go ahead. Turn your radio down. Ricky, you got to turn your radio down. Hey, y'all hear me? Yeah, go ahead. What's your question for Stabman? Oh, the, my name's Frankie. Oh, geez. On my back. Frankie, what's your question? Yeah, you're good. Um, No, I just want to say, Mr. Graham, uh, I listen every day, guys. Uh, today's actually my 25th birthday, Happy so I'm off from work today, and I wasn't even supposed to be in the car, and... I'm so thankful that God told me to get up, get out, and get something today because I wouldn't normally wouldn't be listening right now. And I'm literally was a very weak person, and I'm cur- I'm 
25 today, and I'm going through everything you're talking about, like how to gain that strength. And, man, I'm I'm trying to keep it together right now, but you really moved me, man. I'm literally going through everything right now, and it, it really means a lot. I've never read a book in my life, and I plan to make yours the very first one. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. wow. And this is Are you barfing. still there, my brother? Is wow. you still there? Oh, he's still there. Yeah, focus on love. Yes, I'm still here, Mr. Graham. Focus on love. Look at your... Look I, at, I am. Yeah, focus on love. Don't focus on negativity. Don't focus on hate. Don't focus on what you can do. Focus on... Can't do. Focus on what you can do. What can you do? Okay? And then change your perspective about the situation because whatever you put out will come back and the energy energy will change. Change your energy. Focus on that. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir, and it has, and I've noticed that. Thank you very much. Um, Hold on the line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gift you yes. um, an autograph. you mind autographing a book? I'd love to. I'm going to uh, gift you an autograph book by uh, Mr. Graham, okay? Your name is Frankie? Yes, sir. Yes, Ho- sir. Hold on the line. We're going to take care of you, okay? Hold on one second. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this one because you, you it, focus on the love. That's something my grandfather would say to me before he passed, focus on the love, son. You'll find all your answers in the love. And um I love watching um Oprah and you. I, I you know, I you know, I I didn't grow up with a my father in my household, but I never gave up on family or what that could look like at its best. And watching you guys this relationship and you you've taken a lot of scrutiny, a lot of criticism, but on my end you get a lot of praise. Um, because of the way it's sustained. And I'm curious, too, when did you first realize that you were in love with her? What was that? Was there a definitive moment? Well, I was always attracted to who she was as a person. Mm -hmm. I mean, an extraordinary person and confidence. First of all, I love strong women. Yeah. You know, because my mom was strong. Absolutely. So, you know, that... (laughs) That helps, you know. Uh-huh. So, uh, but uh, it's it has grown and grown and grown over a number of years, and it's a beautiful thing. I mean, I'm I'm so lucky and fortunate to be with her. It's uh-huh. it's, it's a blessing. Yeah, there's yeah. no accidents, though. Say that again. There's no accidents. There's no, no accidents. Facts. That yeah. Okay. And then um, I remember I want to say it was the Golden Globes, and somebody asked you, uh, should she run for president? And you said absolutely. It, it, will, will she throw her hat in the ring? Uh, I don't think so. I think she's doing well. Based okay. on uh, if she doesn't do, uh, I tell her this all the time. If you don't do another thing, you have mm-hmm. done everything you need to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, she, like I said, she doesn't do another thing. I mean, you know, imagine she's coming from Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. washing. I mean, with an outhouse in the backyard, mm-hmm. no entitlements, and you a number one show for twenty five years. You're number one. Mm-hmm. And then to turn that around and then, you know, take her, uh, 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 you know, network own and create, take it from, I think she was like $200 million, uh-huh. you know, in debt. I'm just throwing that out. And to turn that around when everybody, you know, thought she wasn't going to make it uh, and, to, and to make that a success. And then to be able to have this deal, of course, with Apple she's doing uh-huh. and then produce, still be producing after all these years and be a, you know, she's a, she's a billionaire. So to be self-made and nobody's given her one thing. Uh-huh. So when I see these uh, most powerful women in the world and all of that, and she's like, they put her sometimes and she, they've done this, put her at 51. I said, you gotta be kidding. Yeah. <laughs> she owns herself. She has her own stuff. She can't be fired. Uh-huh. Most of these folks can be fired. Uh-huh. And so, you know, uh, she's an extraordinary woman. She is she is the prototype for identity leaders. So okay. we want my brother, Frankie, uh-huh. we want him to be an identity leader. Uh-huh. Take control of your own destiny. Create a vision for yourself bigger than your circumstances. Organize and a plan for yourself. Work on your habits every day. Realize that everybody's equal because everybody's got 24 hours. The question is, what do you do with your 24 hours? Develop a dream team around yourself. 
Focus on purpose. Find your purpose in life, what mm-hmm. you should be doing. Focus on what your father used to say. I mm-hmm. mean, what grandfather, your grandfather used yeah. to say. What did he say? He focus, focus on, on the love. love. You'll Fo- find the answers in the love. Focus on the love. Yeah. And organize the love first, right? Yeah. Write down everything you love in your life. And then take all the information, education, and make it relevant to what you love, and your life will change. Stab me, Graham. Uh, and finally, I asked you uh, your, your opinion. Uh, you know, with our, I mean, I don't know. Our country has always been in a divide, in my opinion. Uh, what do you? What is your opinion on the uh, current leadership of this country and what we're seeing? Focus on the love. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Graham, ladies and gentlemen, that's so fine much. enough for me. Uh, get the book, Identity Leadership. To lead others, you must first lead yourself. Please come back. If you ever in New York, you, you ain't got to uh, be Listen, <laughs> I'm looking to hear about so many great things from you, my brother. Thank I'm you, telling son. you, you got to drive. You got the tenacity, you got the spirit, you got the, you know, you got the want to, uh-huh. you want to, uh-huh. okay? You got the care and you got the love. So uh, it's going to be wonderful to see you just evolve throughout the world. Thank you, sir. You are officially a citizen. A swing about it. There you go. Stab the ground, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Pleasure. All right, we got my cousin E-40 is up next. You want to talk with E-40, he brought, he brought his artist. OMB PZ 888-742-3345. Give us a call. <laughs>